So I'd like to thank uh, Professor Maurice Font for inviting me to this workshop. I'm honored for this. And today I would like to present our research about Brazil and the soybean expansion in Central Area, especially in Mato Grosso State. Um, so uh, this research was carried out by GMAP. GMAP is a um, group of social uh, change agribusiness and public policies in Brazil. And uh, I have some colleagues there in University of Rio de Janeiro, uh, as um, Valdemar Junior Vez, Beatriz Heredia, Moacir Palmeira, and uh, Leonil de Medeiros. And uh, uh, we was carried out uh, a previous research, field research in five areas in Brazil. Mato Grosso, eh, Bahia, Pará, Minas Gerais, e Goiás. Um, especially, uh, I worked about Mato Grosso, the state of Mato Grosso in central west region of Brazil. Uh, the Brazilian agribusiness sector, uh, uh, for me and my colleagues, um, points out um, a question about development patterns and are at stake. Rhythm and intensity of change. About new stakeholders, new products, and new public policies. I think that it's important, and yeah, I would like um, um, to draw your attention for this, because it, uh, there are uh, so many changes, uh, so intensive process of transformation in landscape in rural uh, areas in Brazil. Uh, despite uh, that in the conclusions that could you uh, or me about this, but now this, pro this process, uh, the dimension and the dynamic of the expansion of agribusiness in Brazil is so important to me. Uh, to discuss with you today uh, here. So, uh, I think um, about, um, I think, uh, discuss with you about the soybean expansion and the public policies uh, about the rural credit in Brazil. Um, it's important to show, I would like to draw uh, your attention for this map also. Uh, this expansion of soybean is also similar uh, in the southern uh, coin of Latin America, especially in um, Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. Uh, here, uh, the 1908, 1999, 2000, and 2010. So there is a big expansion of soybean production, especially in Brazil. Uh, uh, and Argentina also, and Uruguay also. It is a similar process with the same actors, uh, uh, like uh, groups, especially from Argentina, Los Globos, y El Tejar, que now uh, invest in Brazil, especially in Mato Grosso and Mato Grosso do Sul. So this uh, process of expansion of soybean production um, put, uh, puts out a problem for demands for land. Huh? And there is a several uh, causes, a several process of demands for land in Brazil today, mm -hmm. huh? especially uh, about the international capital land government uh, investments in Brazil, in Argentina also. Huh? But the expansion of the agribusiness uh, in agricultural frontiers, uh, uh, Amazon regions, uh, especially Mapitoba, Marinhão, Piauí, Tocantins, Bahia, in Northeast region. Uh, but also the struggles of the indigenous people and Afro-Brazilian slaves descendants, uh, named in Brazil as Quilombo communities. Uh, it's a several conflicts there in those regions. Uh, and uh, also demands for land uh, about the land reform, the agrarian reform in Brazil uh, uh, since uh, 10 years ago. So, 
But in the soybean production case, uh, it's important to see. Um, uh, I would like um, uh, to show that uh, from uh, 1985, uh, uh, we can see a spike in the amount of the production of soybean in Brazil. Uh, in blue, uh, planted area in a thousand of hectares, uh, and in red, uh, production a thousand of tons. So today, the last number is uh, almost uh, 110,000 uh, uh, million. Sorry, uh, about the production in a thousand tons and. Uh, uh, almost around uh, third million hectares of uh, area, hectares uh, in production area of soybean. So it's a, 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 a strong process of specialization with planted area with soybean in Brazil. Um, you'd like uh, to draw your attention to this map. Here we are, uh, 1973, and uh, the, the production of soybean is so concentrated in the south of the country. Uh, here, uh, 1908, 1909, 2000, 2010, and 2014. We can see this process of expansion is like an eye from the south area in the Rio Grande do Sul, Santa Catarina, and Paraná states, to the Cerrados beyond, uh, like uh, savannas area in Brazil, in the central area of the country, uh, like uh, Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sul, and Goiás, in the central west region, but also in northeast, northeast, sorry, region. Especially in Mapitoba is a economy of Maranhão, Piauí, Tocantins, e Bahia in Northeast region. Yeah. Result today, 2014, in an important uh, place of Mato Grosso as a big producer of soybean in Brazil. Uh, almost 31% of total production of soybean um, after Paraná, Rio Grande do Sul, Goiás, and Mapitoba. Uh, and in terms of producers, we also, the big producers in Brazil now, uh, as uh, these first four groups, Amagi, Bom Futuro, CLC Agricola, Vanguarda Agro, each had at least uh, 140,000 hectares of soybean planted area in 2012. It's a big, big producer there. Huh? So, but uh, we are also the uh, foreign uh, producers uh, as uh, Argentinian groups, El Tejar, Los Globos, Adeco Agro, Calix, and Cred Sud. Uh -huh. Especially El Tejar and Los Globos, uh, is, uh, are so important in Mato Grosso today. Mm -hmm. um, in Argentina, is <laughs> in particular, but in Uruguay, Paraguay, e and Brazil. And there, uh, there are the groups from China and the United States also. So, uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the structure of production, soybean in Brazil is also big. Mm -hmm is also large mm -hmm. and concentrated. But in terms of the firms, the agro-industrial agro firms, the trading companies, is also important to see uh, some transformations, some changes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, five important companies in Brazil today. Cargill, Bang, uh, ADM, Dreyfus and Amaj. Amaj is the only Brazilian group in five groups. So in 2000, is so concentrated in the south of the country. But 
during the, dec the, the last decade there, mm -hmm. on, um, we can see the transformation uh, around, uh, toward a new region, a central region, a Cerrados region, a 72% sorry, 72% of the production of these firms now is concentrated in central area in Brazil. So, it's important to see also the process of concentration in terms of the trading companies. In 1995, we had 31% in the far first uh, companies in Brazil, uh, and in 2005, one, 10 years later, 57% uh, the, the four first companies there. But here, national capital, except Cargill, uh, uh, and here, all the, these firms uh, from international capital. Uh, so, this is a process of denationalization of soybean companies. Uh, the, the international capital in 1995 uh, is equal uh, as, uh, 16 percent. In 2005, uh, as 57, it's a big, big in increase in this moment in Brazil. Uh, the, the big firms, the big companies uh, against the cooperatives. Mm -hmm. So it's a concentration, a economic concentration process of the agro-industrial sector there uh, linked to the soybean production. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the exported value uh, in the Mato Grosso case, Amad, Bang, AGM, Cargill, and Dreyfus uh, uh, is equal uh, a fifth or more percent of total value exported value, sorry, a total exported value from Mato Grosso, uh, especially in 2012, 2013, 2014. It's an important production, important participation in the sport uh, from Mato Grosso uh, today. Uh, in terms of commercializa commercialization circuits, uh, it's inter in interesting to, to see that the, in green, the commercialization um, from the special dates from IBGE, uh, it's a um, Brazilian Institute of uh, uh, Geographical and Statistics, in green, uh, we have the commercialization between the farmers and the tradings. In red, we have the commercialization between the farmers and cooperatives. So the cooperatives are so important in the south, but the new areas, the new frontiers in Brazil of soybean production since the 80s in, and the 90s is also important to show the uh, participation of the trading companies. Mm -hmm. It's uh, in brown. We have more than seven percent of the commercialization of the soybean production uh, uh, between farmers and tradings. It's an important, uh, uh, important chain to link the farmers uh, and tradings in Brazil, especially in central area, Mato Grosso including. But, well, Mato Grosso in particular uh, is in a so in interesting case uh, because the, 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 the increase since the 90s is so important. Uh, Look at uh, this graph uh, to see that uh, the the participation of the production uh, of soybean in terms of uh, uh, tons, a thousand of tons, million of tons of soybean in Brazil. Uh, and in terms of the area is important also. Uh, 
the case of the Mato Grosso is interesting because uh, uh, the, the production of the soybean is result about the migration of the farmers from the south, the Rio Grande do Sul and Paraná, uh, named the gauchos or gauchos, that uh, colonized the region in the 80s and the 90s. So uh, the first area is here. Rondonopolis region, but the most important area today is here uh, along the highway uh, named BR163. But it's also important here also in the highway BR158. So here it's a concentrated region. Uh, Sorriso is a municipality in this region that's the most important producer of soybean in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's a big transformation, a change in the landscape of this area. But uh, in my view, uh, this process is so fast, <laughs> is so critical, and there are, there are uh, many conflicts there because uh, there isn't an uh, empty space, but an uh, uh, occupied space with the migration from the south of, of the, uh, the, country, the country, sorry. So, uh, we can see in this graph that uh, Mato Grosso and Brazil, uh, the change in the structure of the area, uh, soybean production. Uh, so, in Brazil, in 2006, uh, the last uh, agricultural census in Brazil is 2006. Now, uh, Brazil um, is um, launched a new agricultural census this year, 2016. But in 2006, in Brazil, uh, only 10% of the soybean production is, uh, sorry, was in the uh, properties over uh, 5,000 hectares. But in Mato Grosso, 41% of the soybean production was in properties over 5,000 5,000 hectares, sorry. It's a more concentrated process in Mato Grosso than Brazil. And also it's important to see that the, the small farmers, especially in Mato Grosso case, since in 1985, 1995, and 2006, it's not place for the small farmers in soybean production. It's a production concentrated in the larger farmers. There, there is, for example, a Pinazo producer that had a farm with uh, 50,000 hectares in Mato Grosso today. It's two times the size of Sao Paulo capital uh, in Brazil. Uh -huh. So, um, I, I would like uh, to highlight some points uh, here, uh, because for me, it's movement, is uh, different flows to soybean production in Mato Grosso. The first one is the farmer flow from the south region, Paraná, Rio Grande do Sul, to the Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sul, and after Pará, and after Amazonia, et cetera, et cetera. The second one is worker flow from Northeast region, especially Maranhão state, especially workforce for agricultural sector. And we have also a capital flow, national and international capital flow, especially from Europe, from Argentina, from United States, and the last years from China uh -huh. uh, to develop new products, technology, fund and finance, soybean buyers, etc. Uh -huh. Especially uh, trade companies. And uh, last but not least, uh, government flow, uh -huh. uh, rural credit, infrastructure, especially in transport, technology, um, 
in BRAP uh, as a company, uh, uh, a government company for new uh, technologies in Brazil uh, since 1975. For me, is a conversion of in a specific territory. This flows lead to synergies and conflicts among stakeholders and between them and native communities, indigenous peoples, family farmers, quilombos, etc. This is a, some real, uh, not numbers, but real process in these areas. This is interesting to me to um, understand better that the dynamic of soybean productions. So, first, I would like to speak also about the state, because the, the discourse of the farmers, especially the gauchos in Mato Grosso, that is the, uh, the pioneers, mm -hmm. the voluntary pioneers, the farmers from the south, but uh, is not the whole of the state in this process. But there is the state, mm -hmm. especially in infra infrastructure. You know, I think that Mauricio will talk about this. Mm -hmm. It's important to show that, for example, to export the soybean from Mato Grosso, the uh, highways and the ports uh, uh, in Mato Grosso and Pará, for example. But I would like to highlight the process from the rural credit. Mm -hmm. These maps, for example, show that uh, importance of the, the first map, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, 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 the percent of rural properties with access to rural credit. So concentrated in the south of the country. But when we see the average value of bank loans, especially public bank loans, uh, is so concentrated in central areas, especially Mato Grosso and Mato Grosso do Sul and Sao Paulo for the sugar cane, sugar cane especially, and the Mapitoba in the Northeast region. No? So, uh, this uh, process in Mato Grosso is more concentrated. The average value for by properties in Mato Grosso is more and more than the average from Brazil. In yellow, Brazil. In uh, uh, black, uh, Mato Grosso. And uh, red, green, and blue, the some municipalities in the central Mato Grosso that I visit in my field of research there. Uh, it's uh, a lot of money from rural credit for these properties uh, in this contest. It's important to see that the credit is so uh, concentrated also last years. 51% uh, uh, of total contracts uh, in terms of value is uh, concentrated in contracts over uh, three, uh, sorry, uh, 300,000 reais uh, uh, by property. Uh, and in terms of the product in Brazil, uh, soybean uh, is equal to a third percent of the total rural credit in Mato Grosso is 60 or 70 percent. It's a, a, a big concentration process of finance, public finance, to develop the production uh, for three or four products. Soybean, corn, coffee, and sugar cane. Oh. So, uh, I'm first now, Mato Grosso, for example, uh, it's a uh, big concentration in this area, is a BR163. In green, the rural credit for agricultural sector. In brown, the rural credit for uh, livestock. Uh -huh. And in 2004, the areas with soybean production uh, and the uh, rural credit uh, applied especially in this region, but in this new region, new frontier in Mato Grosso also. Uh, and uh, we can see in this graph, for example, uh, 
the number, the variation of the number of contract values and the contract number. Uh, it's, it's important to show that the, since 2007 until 2014, uh, the, uh, the rapid increase of the resources from the public sector, especially uh, by the Banco do Brasil, uh, it's a public bank in Brazil, but also the Development Bank, uh, to finance the production of the soybean there, especially in Mato Grosso. Uh, but uh, there are also uh, the investments, uh, foreign investments in land in Mato Grosso. Uh, this is a um, number of the total of international properties uh, in land in Brazil. Uh, we can see here the participation of Mato Grosso, almost 20%. Uh, with international capital uh, by the, um, buying land in there. Not only the companies and the agro-industrial chain, but the land. This is a new feature uh, in Brazil uh, since 2007, 2008. The importance of the land grabbing boxes there. Uh, here, some numbers and names <laughs> from the companies that invest in Brazil today in land. Uh, we, uh, I mark them in red, uh, especially the capitals from Holland, for example, New Land and uh, Canada, uh, also uh, you are uh, some enterprises from uh, uh, some companies from Canada. Uh, and you'd like finally uh, discuss with you some impacts. Um, the first one is the variation in land prices because of the expansion of the agribusiness, the land grabbing, etc., uh, are the direct impact in the price of land in Brazil. Uh, the source here is Instituto FNP, a private institute there, that shows uh, uh, the variation, the big variation between 2004 and 2013 in the price of the, of the land around 34% in the consolidated area. But we, uh, when we see the Amazon area, the Mapitoba area, the variation is also 600% in the same period, the new frontiers of the agricultural sector in Brazil. So it's a graph with these numbers, huh? but uh, it's the, the strong movement of valorization of the land there. You know? uh, it's important to show this. But there are also some impacts in the environment. There is a, a, good, a good work um, made by Dominguez, Berman, and Manfredini in 2014 with new technologies of the georeferenced um, images. Uh, and in São José do Xingu in Para State, there is an Amazon biome here. Here is Cerrado. And between Mato Grosso and Para, there is a transition area. So there is uh, some limits to produce there. In the Amazon area, the limit is 20% of the total area of the property. In the Cerrado area is 50%. But there is a process of expansion of soybean production there also, in Pará, in Amazon. Uh, there is an image from 1945, sorry, 84, uh, the yellow, uh, um, the yellow uh, is a um, production of livestock and the green is a uh, forest. Uh, 
Uh, here, 1994, the red is here, is São Félix do Xingu, it's an urban area. Yellow is livestock, and green uh, is forest also. And 2009, uh, we can see the participation in Amazon region of the soybean production. Here in, in brown or orange, uh, this is a expansion of a specialization of the soybean production in this area. So, some conclusions uh, to finish my presentation. This is a strong process of transformation in landscape areas in Brazil, especially in Cerrado areas. It's a dynamic, it's an important dynamic, so, but there is some impact no? that I will discuss I would like to discuss with you today, especially in this process of the movement, uh, the, of concentration process, concentration of the land, concentration of the policy, the public policies, concentration of the uh, economic uh, and material uh, things, uh, and the technology, et cetera, et cetera, and some impacts in the environment. But I would like to highlight uh, that this process is not necess necessarily private. Uh, it's important the, the participation of the farmers, uh, it's important the participation of the trading companies, national and international companies, but it's important also to discuss, to think about the participation of the state and the government. What policy for what model of development there? Uh, that is uh, what I would like to discuss with you. Um, I would like to thank your attention, apologize for my English. Thank you so much.